Hello, everybody. This is Coffee by Gillespie, Dr. Heisenbrew, if you like. Uh, I have uh, another quarantine coffee question to answer, and this time it has to do with roast level. Probably the most common question that I get is, what is the darkest roast that you have? The darkest, because coffee is black, right? And if coffee isn't black, then coffee isn't good. You know, here's this lovely coffee, and uh, you can see it's quite black, right? So I want a black coffee. I want it to be dark roasted. And I'm not exactly sure what the history of this is. I think probably what it is is that they had a very poor cup of coffee at some point. And they assumed that it was poor, poor quality or, or poor tasting, you know, maybe sour or um, bitter. And that was because it wasn't roasted enough. That wasn't actually like cooked enough. You, what you want to do is take the natural sugars and oils and acids that are inside the coffee and roast them in such a way uh, to maximize their flavor, to develop, like say the sugars, you want them to caramelize so that it's, it's sweet and, and rich, right? Um, when people say, what's your darkest roast? Unfortunately, they might be thinking, what's your roast that has most of the coffee turned into carbon? You know, the black stuff, like when you grill on the outside that you think tastes good, but actually really doesn't? Yeah, that stuff. We want the coffee to be super black. So I have two coffees here that I recently roasted. And when there's remnants, one of the beautiful things is that I get to use, I get to drink what's left over, right? Because I roast to order for the, for the customer. And you can see, even just looking down in these chambers, even with the camera's exposure, that they have very different roast levels very different roast levels, all right? And if I take them out and using natural light, it actually is even easier. This coffee here, this is our 1517 roast, all right? So you can see the 1517 roast, and this is what we what I would call a dark roast. Now you look at it and you say, that doesn't look dark. It's not black. There's not oil on the surface of the bean, but I want you to note a couple things about these beans. You notice how this bean is actually expanding, it's opening up. All right, and you can see the same with this bean. This one's still a little bit closed, but you know, coffee's a, a uh, food product, so you know, it, it varies. You see how these beans are starting to open up? That means that it's actually entered in past the full caramelization stage. Most of the moisture has, uh, has escaped from the bean, and now um, it is actually kind of explosive. It makes a popping sound when it does it. All right, so this is what's called what I would call a full roast or a full city roast, um, or even a dark roast. Now, I want you to compare that coffee uh, to this coffee, which is currently coffee we have in stock from Brazil. All right, now this is a different variety of coffee, so the beans themselves look quite different. But you can see the roast level difference, all right? Some of these beans has, have opened up, but most of them are actually still more tightly closed. You can see it there, you can see it there. And you can see it here and here, all right? So this this is actually a, what we what I would call, um, I guess some would call it a medium roast. But I think most people, when they look at it, they'd say, wow, that's a light roast, right? And that's a medium roast. And you don't even have a dark roast. Where's the roast that has oil on the surface and the beans are black? You see, what some people call dark roast, um, actually, again, probably means more like burnt roast. Uh, what I mean by dark roast is one that's been fully roasted and uh, maybe, unfortunately, or, or possibly actually to its credit, uh, a lot of the flavor components that are unique to the coffee, with coffee, coffees themselves within, say, the blend or within that origin or farm, uh, a lot of those flavors are actually muted and the predominant flavor is that roastiness, all right, that caramelized sugar, that... Um, a little almost smoky or chocolatey flavor, all right? And that's what you're gonna get in what I would call a dark roast, which for us would be the 1517 roast or especially the tenebrae roast, which just means darkness uh, in Latin. On the other hand, what I would call a medium roast, and I think some would call a lighter roast, uh, the, like the Brazil I showed you, that is going to be uh, quite unique. You're gonna be able to taste um, all the unique components in that coffee, like um, the acids and the sugars, right? And they're, they're going to uh, engage you in a way like we talked about in the last video with the, with the 
uh, flavor notes, all right? But that wouldn't be the case if it was roasted dark, okay? Because that those chemical components are going to degrade um, or going to be changed and, and they're, or they're going to be muted and you're not actually going to taste them. So um, typically I roast most of our coffees with the exception of 15, 17 and Tenebrae. I roast them um, to what I would call a medium roast. That's a fully developed roast where a lot of the origin flavors, the unique flavors of that coffee still are present in the coffee, but, um, and it does taste like coffee. It still tastes like coffee. All right. So, and I encourage you to at first, maybe just start with a coffee as is, you know, um, as I would roast it for my own palate, my own flavor, and, and then give me feedback and say, well, you know, it was too dark or it was too light, but don't do it visually. And that's the big thing. Uh, because as you saw in those beans, it didn't look like a full roast, but it actually is. It didn't look like a dark roast, but it actually is. And the proof of it is actually not how it looks, but how it tastes. One of the reasons for that is the kind of roasting that I use. This air roasting, this fluid bed roasting, well, it doesn't draw the oils out onto the surface of the coffee in the way of, say, a drum roaster, all right, which is probably more typical in the industry. Uh, drum roasters apply heat from the outside, it radiates in, and uh, so it heats more the outside of the bean and the inside of the bean comes along secondarily. Whereas with um, this hot air type of roasting, it, uh, it does provide actually, I think, a little bit more of an even heat, uh, less chance of scorching the outside of the bean, but it also really heats the bean from the inside out. So the bean through and through is going to be heated more evenly. And it means that the outside of the bean is probably gonna be a little less dark, even though the inside of the bean might be fully roasted or roasted to the level you want. So don't judge by appearances, judge by flavor and by aroma. Uh, that would be my first encouragement. And I would also encourage you then, uh, <laughs> you know, to try it how it is as it comes, maybe buy a sample pack. We have a four bag, four ounce sample pack. That'd be a great place to start. And then um, taste it, see what you think. Uh, Maybe adjust your brewing recipe. If you're finding it's too strong, maybe use a little less coffee or a lower temperature water. If you're finding it's a little weak, maybe you just need to use a little bit more coffee or actually um, raise the temperature of the water and get a fuller extraction. If that's still the case and you're still like, you know, I'd like to some, try something a little bit darker, I can roast to order, all right? Because I roast every bag of coffee um, as it's ordered. So I can roast it lighter. I have customers that ask for lighter roasts than what I roast. I have some that ask for darker and I will roast it darker on request. All right, so there's your coffee question, um, coffee quarantine question, <laughs> number two. And uh, if you have more questions, uh, put them in the comments, feed below and uh, let me know, and I'll try to get to it with a video soon. All right, keep drinking your coffee.